I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Valentin Insko. Mr. President, distinguished members of the Council, it is my honor to address this distinguished body once again, the 25th time, having in mind that this may uh, well be my last address as High Representative before the Security Council. I regret that we are unable to meet in person due to the COVID pandemic. As always, I hope all of you and your respective countries and citizens are doing well. I extend my sincere condolences to the representative from India for the situation your country currently faces. I hope that there is some light at the end of the tunnel for you and for all of us. I am pleased to inform you that today, a few hours ago, EC Enlargement Commissioner Oliver Varheli and Austrian Foreign Minister Alexander Schallenberg were in Sarajevo to deliver vaccines. Austria was instrumental in the logistic legwork, which made this delivery today possible. When I arrived in Bosnia and Herzegovina in 2009, the international community was entering a new phase of engagement in which uh, it emphasized local ownership over international intervention. Local ownership is a great deal, a great ideal, but with ownership comes responsibility, and the level of discourse today in Bosnia and Herzegovina could politely be described as irresponsible. Last year, 2020, was a year of hope and reflection for Bosnia and Herzegovina. The country marked 25 years of peace as a result of the General Framework Agreement for Peace, initiated on 19th November 1995 in Dayton, Ohio, and signed on 14th December 1995 in Paris. It was a time for reflection on the achievements as well as of shortcomings of the ensuing two and a half decades, which also look, which uh, also look, we are also looking towards the future. This is reflected in the joint of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which read in the part as follows: Today is a unique opportunity to send a message to rightly underline the importance of strengthening trust, peace, and mutual respect among all peoples and citizens. On this occasion, best wishes were also delivered to Bosnia and Herzegovina from former U.S. President Clinton, the Presidents of Austria and Slovenia, the United Nations Secretary General, the Prime Ministers of Spain, the Foreign Minister of Germany and France, and a large number of dignitaries. Respected Council Members, as laid out in my report, as part of a long-standing policy of challenging the fundamentals of Dayton, the Republic of Serbsko authorities, led by Milo Radodic, adopted a set of concrete conclusions in this regard in March. As I reported, these conclusions envisage discussion among domestic political actors on the future of BAH, leaving open the option for the so-called peaceful dissolution of the country. There is no real need to explain the destructive long-term policy of the current RS authorities, as it was explained to this very body by Mr. Dodik in the ARIA format meeting last year in November. I, be I believe it was clear to everyone what kind of irrational, destructive policy and mindset we are dealing with. You will recall he called me a monster and the late Lord Ashdown a criminal. Only yesterday, Mr. Dodik was again in the media claiming he recently told a foreign diplomat that peaceful dissolution is the only option that I bound to uh, happen anyway. That is bound to happen anyway, and that the diplomat had nothing against it. If you or I uh, or anybody else stood up and said, we want to split up our own country, we would be called traitors, secessionists, or seditionists, and possibly arrested. To put it in blunt terms, it is unthinkable in our countries that the president wants to destroy the very country of which he is president. Furthermore, Mr. Dodik's party, the SNSD, recently posted several videos as part of an online campaign promoting peaceful dissolution, which will also run as advertisements to YouTube viewers in BIH. In April, leaders of the Republic of Serbska ruling coalition parties met and Mr. Dodik announced that the RS would form teams for negotiating 
it was clear that if the direction and outcome of such discussions are not to the Republika Srpska authorities' liking, the Republika Srpska Code would uh, reserves the right to finally decide on its future status. Unquote. As to be expected, the developments have stirred up the Federation-based parties, particularly the Bosnia parties, most of which dismissed the possibility of a peaceful dissolution. Um, and some also predicted war in case the Republic of Srpska attempts to uh, would secede from the BIH. As a high representative, I want to be clear. Dayton does not give the right to entities to secede. So once again, the political atmosphere is poisoned and progress on reform is sidelined. And it is extremely unfortunate that the Republic of Srpska authorities have chosen this moment when the entire country is still in the grips of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is also the moment when Republic of Srpska authorities had to borrow 300 million euro via a bond sale on the London Stock Market Exchange to cover its budget deficit because they would not accept the easy money and reforms proposed by the IMF. During my mandate as High Representative, we have seen the goalposts move, shifts in the red line of what the IC is willing to accept. We have seen a shift from rhetoric to action, challenging the state competences, institutions and decisions, and we are now also witnessing a shift from rhetoric to action, challenging the state sovereignty and territorial integrity and with this, the peace implementation process in BIH. To be clear, there is now a concerted effort to formalize and implement the conclusions adopted by the RS National Assembly. At best, the goal is to roll back many reforms, achieved uh, achievements of the last 25 years, which threatens the state, which threatens the state, its competences and institutions, and their ability to take and enforce decisions. This would impact ongoing reforms, including those covered by the 14 EU priorities, many of which build on reforms brought about by high representative interventions. Let us also be clear, even if uh, it is a best case scenario, the aim is a perpetually dysfunctional BIH, which we already see in the near paralysis of the biggest institutions in BIH, including the Presidency, the Council of Ministers, and the Parliamentary Assembly, not to mention in the Federation, which SNSD's partners, HTZ, have succeeded in grinding to a halt. This will have negative consequences for the Western Balkan region and the rest of Europe, as a debilitated BIH is not in the position to effectively deal with the challenges of organized crime, corruption, migration, climate change, etc. If such negative trends continue, the question for the international community will soon be, how long can this kind of destructive behavior be tolerated, and how long can Mr. Dodik and his allies in the RS and elsewhere uh, can be regarded as partners? On the other hand, we have seen movement around the electoral reform process, which has been uh, at a stalemate for years. It could be an opportunity to tackle a key long-standing set of right-based reforms, including removing the discrimination identified in the rulings of the European Court of Human Rights, while also improving the transparency of the election process. Unfortunately, there is a fear and mistrust among citizens and civil society that the international community in BIH would seek to appease the demands to further ethnicize the electoral system. This concept of ethno-democracy would certainly conflict not only with the implementation of the Salitz and Finzi group of cases, but also with the specific goals of Dayton, including the overall aim of the agreement to re-establish a multi-ethnic society that existed prior to, the, prior to the war. I must reiterate that we must not allow this process to lead to further ethnic or territorial division. This would have far-reaching consequences. Apart from the implementation of the Salitz, Finzi and related decisions, the priority should be the implementation of ODIA and GRECO recommendations, which would not only eradicate discrimination, but also increase transparency 
and prevent electoral fraud. Distinguished members of the Council, when I last addressed you in November, I repeated my call on the RS authorities to remove the plaque de dedicated to convicted war criminal Radovan Karadzic from the student dormitory in Pale. I'm pleased to report to you that this plaque was officially taken down in December. On 27 January, I addressed a letter to the Speaker of the Republic of Subsequent National Assembly asking the National Assembly to rescind its three months the Croatians awarded in 2016 to three convicted war criminals, amongst them Radovan Karadzic. The three months passed in April, and I have received no formal response, nor have the declarations been rescinded. The RSNA was to discuss this issue on 28th of April, but postponed it. We will see what happens, but for now I'm informing you uh, the situation is not is not rectified. And the behavior of political leaders most unfortunately encourages similar behavior amongst the ordinary people. In addition to some examples mentioned in my report, just in the last few weeks, a huge mural of convicted war criminal Radko Mladic appeared in RS in the town of Focha, which is well known as a place where unspeakable war crimes occurred. In the absence of more responsible behavior, this again points to the need for the criminalization of the glorification of war criminals as well as genocide denial. In any case, here I would like uh, again to recall the European Commission opinion on the BIH European membership application, which, unequiv which unequivocally states, quote, revisionism and genocide denial contradict the most fundamental European values. There are some areas uh, where, I remain, where I remain hopeful, such as the case, uh, such as the case of Mosta. After 12 years, after 12 years, the city of Mosta finally held local elections, uh, ultimately electing a new mayor, Dr. Mario, Dr. Mario Koric, whom I have met and uh, am impressed with his energy and enthusiasm. So far, there seems to be a great amount of goodwill in the new city council, and I'm confident uh, they will make an honest effort uh, and address the many issues that have accumulated over all the years without a city council. In connection with Mostar, I would like to particularly emphasize the mediation efforts of uh, U.S. Ambassador, of U.S. Ambassador Eric Nelson and European Union Special Representative Johan Johann Sattler. I should also note that the Sarajevo City Council also recently elected a new mayor, a young and enthusiastic uh, lady whom I recently met, Benjamina, Benjamina Karic, from a multicultural family. And citizens in Banja Luka directly elected a new mayor, a member of the RS opposition, Drashko Stanivukovic, uh, aged 27, who so far has taken a transparent approach to his work. Respected members of the Security Council, the 7th of December 2020 marked the 50th anniversary of the so-called Warsaw genuflection, where in World War II, thousands of Jews lost their lives under the German oppressors. This was a historical and astonishing act of atonement. Uh, this is uh, what leaders look like and what is sorely needed in Bosnia-Herzegovina today. In this context, I would like to call on the BIH presidency to live up to, live up to their statement from the 25th anniversary of Dayton and in 2021 to organize and participate in a joint a commemoration for all victims of the war in BIH. I believe that such an act would be healing for all citizens of BIH and even among the presidency members themselves. Uh, I note once again that while Mandela's may not be in politics, there are hundreds of Mandela's in Bosnia and Herzegovina among ordinary people. Honored members of the Council, in my previous address in November, I urged the BIH authorities to implement the third National Action Plan of Security Council Resolution, 
1325 on women, peace and security, which runs until 22. In this regard, in January, some have activi some brave activists launched Nisam Trajila, a domestic Me Too movement that inspired thousands of women and girls to come forward with statements of abuse and violence. I urge the authorities to tackle sexual violence head on to prosecute perpetrators and step up support to survivors. Here I would like to note uh, the many Bosnian women refugees who have uh, ascended to prominent political office outside the country, including Austrian Minister of Justice, Dr. Alma Zadic, the Right Honorable Baroness Arminka Helic in the UK House of Lords, Hanna Sumeya Atic, member of the Norwegian Prime Minister's Cabinet, former Swedish Minister of Higher and Secondary Education, Aida Haji Alic, and Mayor of Kalmar, Mayor of Kalmar Sweden, Janita, Janita Albaza. This affirms that Bosnia and Herzegovina's greatest asset is its human potential. The women I mentioned fled the country at time of war. Now young educated people are leaving the country, not because of the economy, but because of nepotism and corruption, a general lack of the rule of law, and increasingly due political instability. Distinguished members of the Security Council, to conclude, it is possible that this is my last address to you as a high representative. So I want to use the opportunity to reflect on some of the lessons of the last 12 years. Living and working in Bosnia and Herzegovina has been one of the great pleasures of my life. By and large, the people are among the nicest and most caring I have ever met. Neighbors look after neighbors. It is certainly not the case that people cannot live together. This is absolutely not true. But the politicians spend too much time emphasizing what divides them rather than what unites them. Today, I would have hoped that I could declare the job completed. Unfortunately, and much to my regret, Bosnia and Herzegovina remains de facto a frozen conflict. We have uh, unfinished peace. Political leaders continue to pursue wartime goals generate divisive narratives and nationalistic political agendas and speak about the dissolution of the state. The multi-ethnic and diverse society that existed prior to the conflict has all but disappeared while it is becoming more difficult to defend the preservation of multi-ethnic spaces and resist the creation of more ethnic ones. Hate speech, the glorification of war criminals, and revisionism or out genocide denial, despite the verdict of international judicial bodies, remain very common in the political discourse. As I said at the outset, when I arrived in Bosnia and Herzegovina as a representative in 2009, the mantra was local ownership. With only a very few exceptions, quite early on, we have tried that. We have tried that and it is not working. It's not working. Here we are a dozen years later talking about peaceful dissolution. Bosnia and Herzegovina should be firmly on the EU path, but there we are today, and one of its political leaders is openly advocating dividing the country, disparaging and mocking the European Union in the process. We have had a period of robust interventionism, which was uh, which has garn uh, garnered some criticism, but let's be honest, it helped to propel Bosnia and Herzegovina a long way on its path. And we also had a longer period of local ownership during which a step forward has often been followed by two steps backward. Perhaps it is time to consider a different approach somewhere in the middle. In any case, the international community needs to take a decisive stand to stop such centrifugal tendencies which are taking the country further into a downward spiral which could have political and security implications 
not only for the country, but also the region and the rest of Europe. Until uh, there, uh, until there is a genuine demonstrated uh, commitment to peace and stability, and the durable stability and inviolability uh, of BIH, until uh, this is irreversibly ensured, the international community must retain all the instruments at its disposal to address any potential threat, including the executive powers of the high representative, of course, which I didn't use for almost 10 years, uh, also the maintenance of international judges in the BIH Constitutional Court, the international mechanisms in the Bochco district and the international military presence in BIH. Personally, I have the impression that we are far from a situation that would allow change in the post dayton arrangement in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Instead of rushing to a decision, we should come to terms with the fact that peace and stabilization take time. This was also the opinion of Czech Foreign Minister Karl Schwarzenberg, who, as the EU presidency country in 2009, supported my candidature the candidature of Austria. He said to me, we have to have a long-term approach on Bosnia-Herzegovina. How right he was. We should also acknowledge that the pace of progress has slowed because we decided to change our post approach to BH too quickly. I am increasingly inclined to believe that the current post war political elite, with honorable exceptions, mostly alienated from reality, is neither ready or equipped to deal with contemporary challenges and address the real needs of the citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I tend to believe that they are not our genuine partners moving the country forward. We therefore need to find a way, uh, a way to deal with them in a firmer way and at the same time uh, move past them or find new partners. The good news is that there are progressive forces in Bosnia and Herzegovina with whom we can partner, who want to normalize their country. History shows we can be incredibly successful. Let us not forget that in 2005, in 2005, Bosnia and Herzegovina was a poster boy for post-conflict resolution, a country delivering structural reforms and advancing towards constitutional change. If we were able to forge a single army from three armies which fought each other a day earlier, we can certainly do what remains to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, but I must be blunt, both the international community and progressive actors in BIH are making a fundamental mistake if they assume that things will somehow work out because time is working in our favor. This is a fundamental mistake as long as the forces of disintegration are stronger than those of reintegration. For time to be on our side, I'm back to a dynamic of reform and reintegration. I would like to thank you for your cooperation and attention for all these many years. Thank you.